What's up everybody, welcome to Among the Fence. My name is Aaron, and if it's your first time seeing one of my videos, I'd like to welcome you to my channel where we just chill and talk about all the things that we love or hate. And if there's anything you want me to do a review on, leave a comment below letting me know what it is, and I'll make it happen for you. New old album, EP, single, whatever. And also, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like. It does so much to help out with YouTube's algorithm. Something so little takes it so far. Today we're checking out the album Hollywood Suicide by Ghost Kid, which is the second studio album from the former vocalist of Eskimo Callboy, Sushi, and his group of friends. And just like Eskimo Callboy, Ghost Kid is a blend of electronic music and metal, and they do it very well. And the debut album, which was also a self-titled album, gained a lot of traction due to its aggression and its extremely catchy choruses. Sushi said that he was listening to a lot of Marilyn Manson and Fever 333, and you can definitely hear it in that album. And there's a little bit of it in this album as well. He said that this new record was going to push the boundaries of art, especially within his home country of Germany. And it's kind of a concept album about an artist trying to make it in Hollywood. And basically the things you have to do is basically you're basically giving everything up. It's like suicide with how far you have to push yourself in order to get success, in order to win people over and actually make something of yourself out there. The album opens up with the title track. That's a really strong scent that does sound a little overproduced, which is something that happens in this kind of genre blend with synth and metal that kind of it, it, the lines get a little blurred here and there. It's about not holding back, giving it your all, and believing in yourself. But unfortunately, in the end, the fame you gain won't be enough to make you happy, and you'll just be left feeling empty inside. The vocals are very much in your face with a quick delivery, and the chorus is catchy. It's just sonically, I mean, it, it's a little generic, I, I gotta say. And then we have the song Sex, which is spelled with a three instead of E, because, you know, edginess, I guess. I feel like the lyrics in this song could be taken quite literally, or it could be a metaphor for the success that he gets from his art and the ecstasy that it brings him. But it's also about how it just makes him feel empty inside as well. Like he compares it to sleeping next to a cold body. It's almost like it's dead to him. Like it doesn't, it doesn't really give him anything in return after a while. It's got a really slow melancholic build up to the chorus, which is very emotional. And even though this isn't really too inspiring musically, it still packs a pretty good punch. Heavy Rain also could be taken either literally talking about a relationship or it could be a metaphor. I think it has a lot to do with the judgment that he faces when people criticize his art. It's a pretty decent song. The synth does a lot in it. It sounds really good, especially in the outro. The chorus has some good metaphors talking about like the ups and downs of getting praised and slammed, especially on things like social media, where I think this is kind of pointing towards a lot where you know you get a lot of praise and you feel great and then you, a lot of people criticize you and put you down and judge the things you're doing and the art that you're making and it really just really really brings you down. We also have the song Valerie. Uh, this one to me sounds the most like a Marilyn Manson song thanks to the vocals and the kind of haunting music. It's pretty bare bones but to me this one works really well. It's beautifully vulnerable and I just really enjoy what the difference it brings to this album amongst all the other songs within it. FSU brings a ton of energy to the table, but I feel like it's lacking lyrical content. He's basically saying he's gonna shut all the haters up. He uses a lot of imagery referring to the Joker and like carving smiles and stuff like that. It's very catchy, but it's also really repetitive. It's just three and three quarter minutes long. It feels so much longer. This is definitely more of a live performance song, I think, to get the crowd hyped up and going. Then we have the song Black Cloud, which is kind of the same thing. It brings the aggression. Uh, the chorus has this feeling of bliss that I enjoyed a lot. The verses are very intense. The song structure and formula at this point though, it feels very familiar. At this point in this album, it's about halfway through, a little bit over halfway through. It starts to really sound like they're just doing the same thing over and over again. And then we have the song Ugly, where he's struggling to meet uh, people's expectations and how you know people who put expectations on other people are very ugly. And even this one, it just... <sighs> It doesn't bring the same intensity as the other two songs like FSU and Black Cloud, but it still feels the same. The lyrics get a little weird in the song Murder. I try to interpret it as he's basically snapped from all the pressure that's been put on him and now he's gone crazy. 
Uh, the synth and lead guitar do a lot of heavy lifting. They probably sound the best in this song, and the drums sound fantastic in the outro. Uh, this is just a really fun jam. I enjoyed it a lot. This is probably my favorite song on this album. Uh, the song Blood is very generic, very radio-friendly sounding. Again, the drums stand out a lot. Everything else is very overproduced. Would have been cool to hear the riff that they were playing because I felt like it had something there. It just doesn't stand out at all. The vocals sound fantastic, though, with passionate screams and one of the crispest crispest vocals that you can hear in the chorus. Uh, this one, even though I said it sounded generic, very radio friendly, I still enjoyed it quite a bit. Then we have the song Dahlia. Uh, this one reminds me a lot of Architects. The chorus is so freaking catchy. It's got a good build up and the like going in the pre-chorus with distorted vocals. It reminds me a lot of the song Blood as well. I just have a hard time at this point remembering which one is which because a lot of these things just sound almost exactly the same. And that brings us to the closing track, Helena Drive. This one is a very weird closing track in terms of like the concept of the album. I'm assuming it's about, you know, like everything he's gone through leads to the conclusion of turning to drugs to help him and her numb herself. I'm not really sure. I, it's really difficult because being explained what this album is about, it does seem to be more about a relationship. And it's really confusing when bands do that. Sometimes Sleep Token will do that. They'll say that this album is about this, but then it just turns into a relationship kind of thing. And uh, yeah, at this point, it makes it seem like this whole album is actually more about a relationship than actual Hollywood suicide. Or maybe it's about someone, I don't know. It seems like he's going through it and someone else is, and now this other person has turned to drugs to numb their feelings. Um, the song placements throughout this album are kind of weird. They don't really work in terms of the concept either. And this one really shows that. And also sonically, it doesn't really line up. I don't know. The, this closing track was just, it, it was kind of weird to me. I didn't really find myself hating this album, but I don't really love it either. I don't know. The songs sound good. Uh, they're all really catchy. Uh, they just all kind of sound the same. And the song placement's kind of weird too. They do a like two aggressive songs and the two slow songs. And that's just the way the album flows. You have a really strong opening track and then you get a slow song right away. And it's just, I don't know, you kind of don't really know where they're going to go with this album. And as soon as you start to figure it out, all of a sudden they do something completely different. <laughs> and it, it just kind of, I don't know, it, the progression sonically and story-wise, it just doesn't make too much sense to me. It also feels like he's kind of singing about the same stuff over and over again in different songs. There isn't too much of a progression. It started out strong, and then about halfway through, it's kind of the same thing, and then it ends on kind of a weird note. So, I don't know. It's Like I said, the concept of this thing, it kind of works, but then it gets lost. Or maybe it's just, maybe the concept of it just applies to one song and the rest of it's about a better relationship. Uh, it's really hard to follow on this one. Musically, uh, there's a lot of production stuff going on. The synth just blasts everything out. Sometimes the drums come through on one song, the guitar comes through. It's mostly just all synth and vocals, which the vocals do sound really good. Store vocals sound really intense. They sound the same on every single song, though. There's definitely a lot of effects on them. The clean vocals sound fantastic. I don't really have any complaint about those. So with all that said, I gotta give Hollywood Suicide by Ghost Kid a 5.2 out of 10. But I wanna know what you guys think. I have a feeling that this album is probably gonna fall in the middle for a lot of people. People are gonna either love it or just kind of dislike it and other people are just gonna be meh. I don't know, I feel like it's gonna be a lot of mixed reviews. But either way, leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of Hollywood Suicide. Let me know what you would rate it and what your favorite song is. And also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Like I said before, it helps out so much with YouTube's algorithm. It's such a small thing to do, but it goes so far. And of course, if you want to help support me and my channel further, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell icon. Doing any of those things helps me out tremendously, and I appreciate it more than you guys could ever imagine. And I appreciate you more than you could ever imagine. And I hope you have a good rest of your day or night, whenever you have me watching this, and I will talk to you guys next time.